this is what you've been wanting right here. Beautiful. It's all roasted up and that gorgeous tart cherry compote underneath. <laughs> this is worth your time. Today's recipe is roast chicken. Pretty basic, right? Look, it doesn't have to be boring, okay? What we're gonna do today is make a wonderful roast chicken. I'm gonna fix a special glaze to put on it at the end and also something to put on to the side as, well, sort of as an accompaniment to the chicken itself. A sauce, actually a compote. Folks, simple enough. When it comes to chickens, try not to make it too difficult. When it comes to any bird, in fact. Right now we're in the holiday season, so we're going to be cooking lots of birds for the holiday season. I don't know why we do that, we just do. However, with it comes some really good recipes though. Today, as you've noticed for the last uh, several episodes that I've done, when it comes to meat, I've been doing some sort of a fruit glaze. Today's gonna be no different. We're gonna be doing a different way of doing a fruit glaze today, and it's gonna taste really good. We're gonna use some nice herbs, a little bit of spice, and a flavor combination that will just pop when it's all put together just right. This is simply roast chicken. We're not gonna make it harder than just roasting a chicken, but sometimes the sauces that you do with your food, those are what really makes a difference when it comes to a great dish. So we're gonna take that roast chicken, we're gonna elevate it a little bit, plus we're gonna do a few tricks to keep moisture in, get it to cook at the right rate, and to get an even temperature throughout that just works. Today, what I'm gonna show you with chicken can be applied to duck, turkey, or any other um, fowl that you would prefer to use. Uh, for instance, if you want pheasant, this recipe will work well with it. But today, I'm working with chicken, because I like chicken, and I thought it would be perfect for the holidays. Simple roast chicken. Let's get in the kitchen. I'm gonna show you how I like to roast a chicken. It's not too tough, let's go. The ingredients we're gonna be using for this today, of course, the star of the dish is gonna be chicken. We have a roast chicken here. Also, we're gonna be using some onion, some shallots, garlic, salt, tarragon. I have back here some wine. This is white Zinfandel I'm using today. Some cherries, these are tart cherries packed in water. They are delicious. And I have some sugar right here. It's a half a cup of sugar on this. We'll also be using just a little bit of olive oil. Folks, it's a pretty simple dish. First, I need to show you how to fix your bird the right way so that it holds moisture in and that it cooks evenly. When it comes time to do your chicken, decide are you gonna go with the onion or are you gonna go with shallots, okay? This one I'm going to use some shallots inside of it, okay? And that's the purpose behind these. These are what some people call aromatics, all right? And it is to release the aroma, the effect of that particular item and to the meat that it is stuffed inside of. All right, now it's not so much that it really seasons it. You're not gonna have an oniony tasting bird or a garlicky tasting bird, but you will have a little of that aroma and you will have the aroma in the dish. That is all quite desirable. So it's something we're looking for, all right? The other thing we want is we want even cooking and we want a good looking bird, okay? Naturally, you'll want your bird to be pretty for presentation, right? Easy enough. We're gonna truss the chicken using a string. I've got about three feet of string here. And this is commonly done, and it's done for a reason. If I were to just roast this, well, it's not going to roast even because there's different things that are different sizes. You have these little bitty wings here. You have these drumsticks. You got breasts, which are much bigger than either of those two. All of these things are gonna be cooking at different rates, different speeds. However, if I can get it all pulled together into a single bundle, then it all pretty much roasts at the same speed all the way through. The other thing I want to mention is stuffing a bird. Now, while we're going to use a couple of items in there to act as an aromatic, we're not going to be stuffing it. There's something I would like to say about stuffing birds. If you're going to fill the cavity of a bird with something that's dense, that takes a long time to heat, 
then that takes longer for the inner meat at the bottom of that breast to finish cooking. So you either end up with an undercooked breast or you end up with a breast that's dry on the outside while the inside is still moist and properly cooked. So you get what we call an even cooking that way. So I recommend against using stuffing in any bird. Do the stuffing or, or a dressing or something like that off to the side of the bird. It really works better. Filling the bird, fill it with something that's an aromatic that'll also allow air into the bird that'll allow some heating of the inside of that cavity so you get heating from the inside as well as from the outside and it will improve the cooking of the bird this is the truth we tie it up to get even cooking we keep from filling it completely to get even cooking it's all about that even cooking so today what we're going to do is we're going to start by getting this trust i'd love to show you how to truss a bird it's so simple we take the ends of our string I just pull them together like so and find the center there it is now I want to take the center of my string let me push my bird back just a little we'll take the center of that string we're going to tie it around one of the legs either one okay I'm going to tie it just like I would start my shoe simple loop if you wish to double knot that you can but at this point it's really not necessary I take my string under the other leg, see there, pass it under, and then pull the two together. Isn't that simple right there? Now what I have to do is go ahead and tie that a second time. And I'm trying to keep a little bit of tension on it at the same time. It's not really working. <laughs> Okay, some days you have that day where the fingers just don't work right. This is that day for me. Okay, tied him down. Hold that. Get that tied. Oh, what do you know? I managed it. Okay, now we're going to get the rest of the bird trust. Something you need to know. When it comes to flipping the bird over, after I turn it over, I pull the strings up. And that pulls these upward in the carcass like this pulling these breasts up okay so that's kind of important to know let's flip him over i want to bring one string well, something went wrong here oops let me pass the string here over this leg over that breast and the same thing here okay now, if i can get it together today We'll get this done. So you notice what I've done? I've pulled that over the breasts. Now I'm going to take it and pull it up just like I said I would. Pull back this way. And that pulls those chicken wings behind the bird. Okay. By doing that, it's going to keep them moist because the drippings of the rest of the bird are going to come right down over the wing as it's cooking. Now the tip of one wing is missing here. You can cut that other one off if you'd like. Or you can tuck these things behind and just shove it right under the string right there like so. That's how you do that. The tips of those strings, simply remove them. And folks, right here is a perfectly trussed bird. Now I like, I like to bring this breast meat up like this. Just like so. Okay, now all I have to do is stuff my bird with my aromatics and we're ready to go. Now what we're gonna do here as I simply want to take the ends off of my shallots. And it's nothing more than just getting it to release better. That's all. I'm going to take these guys and just split them. Just like that. And my garlic. I want to do nothing more than just crush these cloves. Just break them open. That's all you have to do. Okay. garlic just kind of go back and forth on it tossing them down in there <laughs> that's fun isn't it well there you go that bird you've got your aromatics in there it's going to roast up nice and pretty let's get it good and even the next thing this needs is a little bit of oil on the outside and it also needs a little bit of salt okay and that's when i put it in the pan is when i do that okay that bird's ready to be roasted. 
All right, we have it in the roasting pan. I'm going to take this olive oil, and this is mostly important about the outside of the bird. Okay, the whole idea of what I've just done here is I want to keep as much moisture inside of my bird as absolutely possible. One of the best ways to do that is to give it a coating of fat. You see, folks, this is one of the things that we do in barbecue making, is we use what we call a mop sauce. And that mop sauce contains acids as well as fats that we coat on the meat, and then that helps to hold in moisture as we are cooking it. And occasionally we baste it with that, and it comes out great. Okay, so here we go, a little bit of salt on the outside. Now, if you're concerned about the sides of your bird, don't be afraid. Just go ahead and grab him, lift him up, and get whatever you need, okay? All right, That's a very basic thing to do. In the bottom of this pan, I need a little bit of moisture, all right? I need to get some water down in there or wine or whatever. In this case, I'm going to use a little bit of wine because, again, it serves as an aromatic the same way the garlic and the shallots are serving as an aromatic. So that wine will do also. There we go. Put that up in there and open that cavity up. And I try to keep this opening down here shaped well but opened up all right and that's one of the things i try to do all right a little moisture in the pan then we get this in the oven at 350 degrees we're going to let this roast the roasting times you can't really say it's going to take this amount of time because the amount of time this cooks at an altitude of 3,000 feet is going to be vastly different than the amount of time it cooks at a sea level all right so i can't tell you how long average 15 to 20 minutes per pound, okay, average. Again, depending on that altitude. The only way to know for sure is stick a thermometer in this thing, no temperature less than 165 degrees, okay? I like mine right about 175. It gets a little deeper, a little firmer, and I like that, okay? So you cook your chicken at least 165 degrees. Put that thermometer in either here here or up here or here you want a thick area of meat to measure it next to the thigh is frequently done because there's a lot of meat in this area all right here we go i have some wine and water mixed here about one cup of each right in the bottom of that pan now this does several things it does that release in the air that's going to flavor the meat a little bit and give it better aroma. It's also keeping moisture in the meat because you've got that steaming going on underneath this, similar to a poaching action. Not exactly, but similar. It's just the way it's done if you're going to do good roasting. We have the rack that lifts the bird, brings it out of that juice. It'll allow drippings on the bottom of the pan that later, if you wanted to turn into gravy, that's a fantastic thing to do. Let's get, in the, let's get this guy in the oven now. Our bird is ready to go right there. Beautiful. Let's get him in that oven and get busy roasting. 350 degrees, folks. And you're going to take that to a minimum temperature in the thickest part of the meat of 165 degrees. My reduction is simple enough. We're gonna get the wine in. I want just a pinch of salt right here. It's gonna bring out some flavor. And my tarragon. Now this is really simple, folks. I want about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of tarragon, all right? And the tarragon, trust me, it works great with chicken. Works great with any bird, actually. It's a good tasting herb, not too different from basil if you've never tried it. It has a beautiful, beautiful aroma to it and something that you'll really appreciate. Now I'm gonna cook this down until there's only one quarter as much as I started with. Now I've started with two cups of liquid, so I'm gonna reduce that down to one half cup of liquid. I'll bring it to a boil and then reduce the temperature to a medium low and let it simmer until that water is cooked out. This other pan back here, we're gonna get started in that with that in just a moment, and that is going to be to make that compote with. We need to get our wine in here, the sugar, 
There we go. We'll get that sugar dissolved into this wine. There we are. Okay, I'm gonna crush my garlic. And you don't have to just obliterate it. I did a little more than I needed to there. Get that down in here. Our cherries right in here. Oh yeah. Now I need to get this on some heat, let it come up in temperature and cook down to a wonderful, beautiful compote. I finished cooking this down and this didn't take too long. Um, I cooked out all of that water. That started right there as a pint, okay? <laughs> Believe it or not. And we're down to just a thimble full there. I would say maybe about a third of a cup on the good side. Now this back here, this is that, those cherries. I combined the one cup of wine with the cherries and the sugar, got all of that mixed together, and they're back there turning into a beautiful syrup. This, this will be beautiful underneath the chicken is just a wonderful side. Very delicious. When your bird is in the neighborhood of around 145, then you can go ahead and start glazing. That's fine. I pulled the bird from the oven. Now, turn on the thermometer. We're going to go ahead and plunge it down in here. We're going to see what that reading is. And I've got a reading, when I put it right down there against that bone, of 125 degrees. This is doing just fine. So I have this glaze. I'm gonna go ahead and just get it brushed over my meat. This is, so you'll know what this is, it's concentrated acid, all right, plain and simple. It's going to make the meat, well, it's just gonna bring out flavor, we'll say it that way. And it's gonna do it in a really unique way. All right, now this is something that I have shown on some of my barbecue videos, how you can use a glaze like this to bring out flavor within the meat. And that's just adding acid to the dish, essentially. And of course you hear that, you know, add acid to that dish and it's gonna bring out flavor, and it does. It highlights other flavors within the dish. And so that's what we're getting here. So we've got our glaze on there, didn't take much of it. Get this back in that oven. There we go. And finish it off. Now for the quantity of everything that I've used today, in addition to a nice medium sized chicken, we've used one medium sized onion, a good sized shallot, and of course, as you've seen, that breaks into a couple of bulbs, and then anywhere from four to six cloves of garlic, depending on your taste in the garlic. Some salt, you're gonna use up to a teaspoon of salt on this dish, and the tarragon, a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half. Our wine reduction back here, we used two cups of wine to start with on that reduction. And then on the compote, I used one cup of the white Zinfandel to 30 ounces of tart cherries packed in water and one half cup of sugar. So it made the very simple dish there and quite delicious. Folks, it's a good dish. Now let's take a look at what it looks like when it's all finished up. This is out of the oven. It's been out for, oh, about 10 minutes now, and I'm letting it rest a bit. The chicken looks wonderful. This right here looks absolutely divine. There we go. I want to get plenty of that juice. This juice has kind of reduced to a, a wonderful syrup and Definitely, definitely quite delicious. I tasted these just a little bit earlier and it was a wonderful tasting cherry. Now I've already cut free one drumstick, although it is kind of falling apart on me. So I'm gonna get him up on here. There we go. And I'm gonna slice up a little breast. We're gonna get that on there also. Or that skin a little bit. There we go. Nicely cooked breast. Still good and juicy in the center. 
just perfect for this dish. Get him on here. And there we have it. Simple enough, folks. This is a roast chicken, and we've just elevated a little bit in both the way we've cooked it as well as what we've done putting something with it. Roast chicken with a tart cherry compote right there. This came out absolutely beautiful. I'm sitting here looking at this gorgeous chicken, trying to hold off from eating it immediately. Got to do the video, right? Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. <laughs> now that's a dish that'll set you apart in the holiday season. It's just a chicken but the flavors are phenomenal. What we've done to it on the outside, that glaze, that nice little acid bite that it has, the, the cherry compote, fantastic tasting. Um, and if you've never done something like this with, with poultry or with uh, some kind of a bird, definitely give this a try. It's worth your time. Folks, this, mm, pardon me, this is a dish that is just fat and absolutely fantastic tasting. It's fun to make, it's not hard. And one thing's for sure, while this is roasting up, it gives you plenty of time to make your other dishes. So, here you have it. Please enjoy this, but if you would, please take a look right underneath this video in that description box. I've got some links down there. There's one link to Texas Cooking Today. There are hundreds of recipes there for you, okay? A lot of recipes, lots of tutorials that go with those recipes, so please enjoy that. Also, if you would, there's another link, and it is to my website. That's satrotter.com, and that is for S.A. Trotter Arts, LLC. And uh, that's where you're going to find the recipes, and you're going to find some shirts, and you're going to find some pictures and some other stuff, some neat stuff. So please take a look. Thank you very much, and folks, if you would, enjoy your chicken. Bye-bye. I wanted to speak to you for just a moment about my recipes. Now, I put out my recipes, my recipes, okay? They're on my website. Now, I don't put out your average everyday recipe. You know, you, I had somebody comment to me recently. He said, why would I do that when they're available everywhere for free? There's a little difference. Those that are for free, and I've printed them out, you have too, little tiny thing in the corner of the piece of paper that's covered with ads most of the time and then it's not very descript not mine mine are worth having okay so when you get one of mine it's designed to be printed in such a way that it can be put into like a three ring binder look at this look at the quality on it look at the how clear this is the imagery is beautiful so they can be printed, and this is the way I've designed mine, is so they can be printed back to back. And then you end up with, you know, a complete recipe that works in a book. And it comes out absolutely beautiful. Pictures that depict everything that you need to do in the recipe. Now, not all of them are exactly that way, but a lot of them are, and I'm getting more and more done this way. And I'm putting a hard push towards good quality recipes that give better instructions than everybody else's. And that's the reason I do them this way. These are designed to have holes punched in them. Let me pull this up and do this with it. Look, three ring binder, boom, punch holes in it. You have it right there. Everything's all available for you, okay? So, pardon me, I didn't mean to hit the mic. Anyway, really cool idea great way to do your recipes instead of having to buy a book of 50 recipes to get 10 you just pay for the 10 recipes save a whole lot of money and you got a better idea for how to keep your recipes thanks for watching please enjoy what i provide check out texas cooking today there's a lot i mean a lot of recipes there and if you would take a look in the description box down underneath me here and you'll find the links to my website, to Texas Cooking Today, to the stuff that I do, and how to keep up with me and to 
find out a little bit more. Thank you very much. You have a good day.